Hi everybody. So in this lesson, we're going to get the area between two curves. Now, this looks horrible, but I'm actually going to show you that it's not as bad as one would think. First thing I want to look at or show you is what the area between two curves means. Well, if, if this is a curve f of x and this is a curve g of x, the area between the curves is this area here this enclosed area, that orange area. So that's the area we're trying to find. Now, I've deliberately put some of it below the x-axis and some of it below uh, above the x-axis. And where normally I'd say that's going to cause you lots of problems, when you're doing the area between two curves, it actually doesn't cause you any problems. You can do it quite easily using this formula. Now, the formula is not given in the formula booklet. Um, so you gotta know what you gotta know what it is, but it's pretty straightforward. It is just the integral from a to b, where a and b are the intersection points. So a and b are gonna be, let's say, here. Well, they're the x coordinates, if you like, of the intersection points. Here. So this is gonna be a. This would be a. And this would be b. And then you subtract the functions f of x minus g of x. The function on top is f of x, and the function below is g of x. So subtract the one below from the one above. And then it's in a modulus sign because its area, it has to be positive. Now, even if you mess up and you do g of x minus f of x, you'll actually get the same answer. It'll just be negative, and then you can um, just make, make it positive and say, because area has to be positive, it has to be positive, and you'd actually still get the full marks. Okay, I'm going to do three things in this lesson. The first thing is I'm going to show you why this formula works, because I think it's actually really neat how it works. And then the second thing I'm going to do is do an example without a calculator, and then finally I'm going to do an example with a calculator. So firstly, to show you why this whole thing works. Okay, imagine I get the integral of f x from, from um, the integral of f x from a to b. Well, what happens is I'm going to actually put these little, see these little sections here. I'm going to call this a, this b, this c. So b is just this bit here. c is this bit and d is this bit. Now, if I get the integral, if I get the integral of fx from a to b, what happens is, so imagine these are areas, a is an area, b is an area, c is an area, d is an area. What will happen is I'll get a, but it'll be negative. So the integral of the, the, the integral of the blue graph It'll give me negative a because it'll add this section here, but it's underneath the line, so it's negative. And it'll give me c, so it's negative a plus c, and it'll give me d plus d because these c and d are underneath the blue curve. If I integrate from a to b g of x, what I'm going to get is negative a because it's um, it's going to give me this is enclosed by the green graph and the x-axis it's also going to give me negative b same thing and these are negative because they're below the x-axis and then it's going to give me plus d it's going to give me a positive d and then when I subtract, when I do f of x minus g of x, when I subtract them, I'm going to get negative a plus c plus d minus g of x, which is negative a minus b plus d. When I subtract this, I get negative a minus minus a. So that cancels. The a's cancel. I'm going to get c. So I'm going to get c. So the a's cancel. 
negative a minus negative a cancel. C is still there, fine. Then I'm going to get my d's cancel. I have d minus d, they cancel. And I finally get, well, I have c, and then I have minus negative b, which is plus b. So I end up with c plus b. And look, what is this orange area? Well, it's c plus b. Okay, so that's, I actually think that is pretty cool. And it, it shows you how, even though this, a lot of this is happening underneath the x-axis and above the x-axis, this formula makes things uh, much easier. Okay, let's go down and look at two examples, one without a calculator and one with a calculator. So the first thing is, first question says, find the area enclosed by the graphs y equals x squared minus 3x and y equals x. What I want to do is shade in the region that I'm looking for. So the region I'm looking for is this region here. This is the region enclosed by the graphs. Well, enclosed by the two graphs, this region, fine. Now, in order to use my formula, my formula will be the integral. Let's write it out here. My formula will be the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. Now, f of x is going to be my uh, y equals x because it's above this green area. And my g of x, which I subtract, is going to be my x squared plus 3x because it's below it's below the green area. What I don't have is the intersection points. So I have one of them, it's going to be zero, but the other one, I don't actually have it here. So let's just draw, we'll draw a straight line down. I can't obviously find it. Um, I can't just say, oh, well, it must be four. Although it looks like four, I need to calculate it. So let's first find, find intersection intersection points. Okay, to find the intersection points, how, um, how do I find intersection points? Well, I equate them. Where they equal is where they intersect. So I'm going to equate x squared minus 3x equals x. And I'm going to solve this, x squared minus 4x equals 0. I'm going to do this quite quickly. Um, factorize x into x minus 4 equals 0. Either x equals 0 or x minus 4 equals 0, which is x equals 4. So my intersection points, or the x coordinates of the intersection points at least, are 0 and 4, which is good. This is what I need. These are now going to be my limits. Therefore, let's write, therefore, a equals 0 and b equals 4. Now I'm going to integrate. I'm going to integrate f of x minus g of x from a to b. Now I'm going to actually leave out this modulus sign when I do the integration. I, sh I will end up with a positive answer if I choose um, if I choose the blue graph and subtract the red graph. If, as I said before, if, and sometimes you won't even know which is above which. Well, in that case, you just choose whichever you whichever you want, and then when the final answer is negative, make a positive. But here I do know, so it's going to be x. That's my f of x, y equals x, and I'm going to subtract x squared minus three x, and this is all dx. But my a and my b, which I should have actually written here, my a and my b are from 0 to 4. Okay, um, I'm going to simplify this first before integrating it, so I haven't integrated yet. This is going to be x minus minus 3x, which is actually 4x minus x squared dx. Let's integrate this, put it in a square bracket. The integral of this would be 4x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 from 4 to 0. I think I'm just going to simplify it over here to the side. It's going to be 2x squared minus x cubed over 
3 from 4 to 0. Let's take out my round brackets. This is going to be 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32 minus uh, 4 cubed is 64, so that's 64 over 3. And then I subtract, well, I'm subtracting, I'm subbing in 0 here and here, so it's just going to be 0, which is nice. And then I just have to figure out what this fraction is. So 32 minus 64 over 3 is 96 over 3 minus 64 over 3, which equals 32 over 3. So the area, this green area, the area enclosed by the graphs x squared minus 3x and y equals x is 32 over 3. So that's fairly, I mean, it's fairly straightforward considering how complicated the question looks. My area is equal to 32 over 3. Let's just be clear and write. Therefore, area equals 32 over 3. Okay, fine. Example Two, find the area enclosed by the graphs this and this, right? But this time we have a calculator. The working, like this is pretty easy to do with the calculator, to be honest. But the working I want you to show has to be, so the area equals, I want you to show the integral. It's going to be the integral of the blue one. So again, which, which actual area are we looking for? Well, it's this area here this green area. So the area is going to be the integral. Now the limits, we'll find them in a second using the calculator. It'll be the blue one minus the red one because the blue one is above the area and the red one is below the area. So it'll be negative x squared plus 3x plus 4 minus, I'm going to put a brackets, ex e to the x minus 3 dx if you want to put a big bracket here that's fine now what are the limits well actually i don't like the look of the big brackets let's put a big round bracket um what are the limits here well the limits are the intersection points so i'm going to take out my calculator and i'm going to graph this so here i'm going to graph e to the x e to the x minus 3, graph it, and then press tab, and we're going to graph negative x squared plus 3x plus 4. Okay, and that looks exactly like this. Great. Now, the intersection points are analyze graph, intersect lower bound, upper bound, so this is one negative 1.505, negative 1.505, and let's do it again for the one above. Menu, analyze graph, intersection points, lower bound, upper bound, that's 2.174, 2.174. And then I'm gonna actually just put this whole thing into my integral. So I am going to press, well, let's do my integral sign here. And I'm going to go from negative 1.505 to 2.174. And the, and the function, I'm going to put it in exactly as I see it, negative x squared plus 3x plus 4, and I'm going to do minus, and I'm going to open a bracket, and I'm going to do e to the x minus 3. I'm going to close the bracket. So does that look exactly like that? Yes, it does. Press x for dx, press enter, and I get 16.3122. 16.3122. The last thing I'm going to show you, if I go into my graph here, 
and I do um, menu analyze graph and I click this thing called bounded area so if I click bounded area and the lower bound I actually click the point and even if I hadn't got that point it would it would do that for me I can actually pick that point the intersection point and then I pick this uh, the next intersection point is my upper point and it will give me the there this is the answer that it actually gives me 16.31 which is exactly what I got so my advice is actually to do it both ways to make sure you get the correct answer but clearly that has given me a nice area of the it's the bounded area between the two curves um okay that was a fairly long lesson we know how to do it with a calculator we know how to do it without a calculator the the main thing to note though is there's a formula this is the formula and it is not in the formula booklet if you did not understand anything i did here it won't affect you at all in your exam and possibly not in your life but I actually find this really interesting and neat how it all works out even when it's underneath the line so it's it's worth at least trying to follow it but certainly if you can do the two examples below you should be in good shape in this topic see you in the next lesson